The Ghostly Greeter by Nancy Roberts Old North Hull Street Historic District in Montgomery, Alabama has a haunted house for a welcome center. How appropriate that it is the home of a ghost said to be unusually cordial. The most frequent accounts of seeing this ghost, the friendly Eliza Lucas, comes from people who pass the house at night and see a woman dressed in the style of the early 19th century waving at them from a doorway of the Lucas Tavern. Rather than be rude, most wave back and begin to wonder about her only later, especially if the hour is approaching midnight. In the 1820s, Lucas Tavern offered travelers a comfortable place with clean beds, warm victuals, friendly hostesses. Undoubtedly, one of the great moments of Eliza Lucas's life was when she opened the door to welcome the handsome, bewigged General Lafayette, French hero of the American Revolution, on his way to Montgomery in 1825. There is no record of what Mrs. Lucas served for dinner that night, but a menu of tavern fare found later listed chicken pie, ham, five vegetables, pudding and sauce, sweet pies, preserved fruits, a dessert of strawberries and plums, wine and brandy. All this cost the traveler 75 cents. Those who doubt that Eliza's spirit is in the tavern may begin to believe it after hearing of one Saturday morning in the fall of 1985 when a man arrived unsolicited to meet Eliza. He encountered her just inside the front door of the tavern, describing her as of medium height, about five foot three inches tall, with a warm, pleasant disposition. Strangely enough, the tavern cat, ordinarily very docile, refuses to go into or out of the front door of the tavern unless one of us goes with her, and even then appears uneasy, the late director Mary Ann Neely informed the author. It is a well-known fact that animals often sense the presence of a spirit even when people do not. The tavern restoration was completed in 1979, and on January 2, 1980, it became the visitor's reception center and home of the offices for the historic district. Soon after we occupied it, Eliza began to make her presence felt, said Miss Neely. In the winter of 1980, there was a late afternoon meeting in front of the fire in the tavern room. The question was controversial, and one person began to speak very heatedly. At that point, a great puff of smoke and ashes erupted from the fireplace, covering the dissident with a coat of chimney soot. All we could think of was that Eliza had not agreed with the speaker and had expressed herself <laughs> forcefully. On the other occasion, two staff members were sitting at a table having lunch and were discussing the historic district and its operation. With no warning, the door to the room began to slide off its hinges. As they watched, it continued to slide and finally struck the floor with a resounding thud. Again, Eliza had manifested her displeasure over something that had been said. Objects disappear only to reappear in new locations, Mrs. Neely concluded. Eliza rearranges, straightens, messes things up, or leaves them about in a quite unpredictable fashion. Nor can we be sure where she will reappear next. The whole restoration and its 19th century buildings bring the past to life and are highly popular with visitors, some of whom are amateur photographers. Vince Ives was one of these. In the late summer of 1986, he
coaxed a hostess into letting him stay to shoot some pictures after the restoration was closed for the day. When the last visitor had left, and the tour guides as well, Vince went about throughout the Lucas Tavern's back door and into the square with the other 19th century buildings. They were bathed in the wonderful, warm light of late afternoon. He knew that the light would not last long, and he moved quickly from one building to another, shooting. The third building was the 1890 schoolhouse, one of Vince's favorites. It was filled with all the materials a student would have found in a classroom in the 1800s. Earlier, he had noticed its interesting details, the pot-bellied stove, the pine schoolmaster's desk, the kerosene lamp, the abacus, and the slates. It would have been nice to leave this building until last, like a dessert, but the natural light inside the room would be gone soon, and Vince did not want to use a flash. He started towards the schoolhouse, thinking he might want to place some school day's objects on the windowsill for a still arrangement. It would be great to have a teacher or someone using a slate or abacus to photograph in there, but that was out of the question. Vince had a sense of awe as he thought about all the boys and girls who had sat at these desks long ago. Students who had grown up and left their mark in the world, but who had now been dead for many more years than they'd ever been alive. Closing the door quietly behind him, Vince looked around the room to decide where he would begin. Then he started in surprise. All the guides must not have gone, for there sat one in her 19th century costume. She could be a picture subject for him, perhaps pose as the teacher. She was near the window and seemed absorbed in a book with a blue cover. Why had she stayed on after all the others had left? Wearing that old-fashioned dress with the light coming in from the window beside her, she would make a great picture. Vince started to ask her permission, but then thought how ridiculous that was, because none of the guides minded having their pictures taken. Besides, she might change position, and she was perfect, just in the way she was. Very quietly and unobtrusively, he began to shoot, moving a little to this side or to that, adjusting the lens, bracketing, Unfortunately, the tripod he was carrying struck the leg of a desk with a sharp crack, and the sound seemed to startle her. Hurriedly, she got up to leave. Wait, don't, please. I I wonder if I could shoot a picture or two of you there at the old schoolmaster's desk. It, It won't take long. She did not reply, which seemed rude. And instead of going toward the desk to sit down, she stopped under the picture of George Washington. Oh no, thought Vince. He might be able to get her to pose there under the portrait. But it was too high to show her over her head. The picture of her sitting at the desk, absorbed in the book, would have looked much more natural as it really might have come from out of the past. Pardon me, ma'am, I'm I'm Vince. Then his heart began to pound and His lips refused to form the words he was about to say. As he stood there in the middle of the classroom, ready to coax this subject into sitting over at the desk, she reached the picture of Washington. For the first time, she appeared to acknowledge Vince's presence, and she turned to wave at him slowly and deliberately. The eyes in the face never really seemed to react to him as a person, although they appeared to stare directly at his face. It was a hot August day in Montgomery, but as Vince looked back at her, he was chilled to the bone. 
Then, to his great astonishment, she simply floated right through the wall beneath George Washington's portrait, as effortlessly as if she were passing through an open door. Ma'am, he tried to call out to summon her back, but the words failed him, and he began to tremble all over. He sat down in the front row of desks. He stared at the area under the portrait. Then he rose and, walking over to the portrait, ran his fingers over the wall beneath it as if searching for some kind of a door or secret panel that would press inward. He couldn't accept the fact that the girl had just simply disappeared. It was almost dark outside when he finally decided to leave. A little dizzy, his knee still weak, Vince walked over to the desk where she had been sitting. On it was an abacus that looked as if it were being used for arithmetic. The blue book that she had been holding was a McGuffey's Reader, written in the mid-1800s for children. Later, Vince asked Miss Neely if Eliza was ever seen in other places besides the front of the tavern. Her spirit, you mean? Oh, my yes, she said. She's a lively one, if you'll pardon the pun. She's been seen in many different buildings here at the Restoration and most often in the schoolhouse. I doubt if she was ever able to get much formal education in her time coming from a humble background. But if there was ever anyone who would have wanted to better herself, it was Eliza Lucas. She was ambitious and a hard worker. We all feel Eliza's presence, and even while I talk about her now, I think she is trying to tell me how I should present her story, said Miss Neely. The question is, why does Eliza's spirit continue to visit the tavern. My idea is that Eliza, having lived and operated the tavern for more than 20 years, found her most fulfilling memories in this building. It was here that she reared her family and was recognized far and wide as a hostess. We are very proud of Eliza, and I believe she is one of us. I'll bet... She's around here somewhere right now. Wouldn't it be something if you can get a picture of her? Why, Mr. Ives, you look white as a sheet. Are you feeling all right? Um, yes, of course. Mr. Ives, what is that book at your feet? Vince stooped down, and as he looked at the book, his heart began beating madly. It was the McGuffey's Reader. He read the child's name on the flyleaf, the same name he'd seen earlier on the reader in the schoolhouse. How did it get here? It was almost as if Eliza were giving him her calling card. A book on the floor, eh? Well, that's our Eliza at it again. Did you get some good pictures? I hope so. Do come back and see us again, Mr. Ives. We want to welcome you, just the way Eliza would have done if she were here. As soon as Vince returned to his car, he unloaded the film that he'd shot in the schoolroom and marked the top of the can Eliza. He had sent the roll off to Kodak when he returned home, not trusting it to the local processor. When he picked it up and put the slides on his light box. The pictures of the buildings were fine, as were those of the exterior of the schoolhouse, but all the frames that he had shot inside were blank, except for showing a streak of bright golden light over the left, or middle, or the right, never in the same place, but depending on where Eliza was standing. As I moved around Framing my picture, he said to himself, wonderingly as he looked at all his slides. All Vince needed to do now was to find a photography book with instructions for the proper exposure to capture both the man-made backdrop of a schoolroom and a 
good sharp image of a ghost. Lucas Tavern was relocated and restored in 1982, Old Alabama Town, a collection of restored 19th and 20th century structures reflecting the lives of the people who settled and developed around central Alabama. The town is open for self-guided tours, Monday through Friday. The end.